Hello, and welcome to the Silver Bulletin Highlight Show, presented by Lantern TV. I'm your sports director, Brian Nelson, and now let's take a look at some of the highlights from today's game against Wisconsin. First up, we have a sack from Chase Young. This will be his first of four in the game. Next up, we have a tackle from loss from Justin Hilliard on Wisconsin's next drive. And then the following play, we have a sack, another sack from Chase Young. Moving on to the offensive side of things, we have a 20-yard pass from Justin Fields to J.K. Dobbins. And then later on, the High State's next drive is Justin Fields to Chris Olave for the touchdown. That will be a 27-yard touchdown pass. Moving into the second half of the game, we have a 10-yard run from Justin Fields for the score. Ohio State's next drive had another similar result, this time J.K. Dobbins for a 9-yard touchdown run. And then Chase Young with his third sack of the game, but this time it was a strip sack. J.K. Dobbins with another touchdown run, this time for 14 yards. In the fourth quarter now, Chase Young with his fourth and final sack of the game, this time another strip sack, which was recovered by the Buckeyes. And last but not least, we have a touchdown pass from Justin Fields to Chris Olave for the score. And we are back. Ohio State just dominated Wisconsin 38-7. And with me I have our sports editors, Griffin Strom and Andy Anders. And Griffin, let's start off with the obvious question. Chase Young had a monster game. Four sacks. What is your take on his play? Yeah, Brian, so it was ugly early for the offenses. You know who it wasn't ugly for the entire game? Chase Young, um, putting himself in Heisman contention, arguably, with a monster game, four sacks, two of them strip sacks, one of those recovered by the Ohio State defense. Um, Chase Young, he even lined up uh, in like a middle linebacker look at one point, and uh, he's shredding the, the Wisconsin front, which was supposed to be one of the best in the country. Um, you just saw Chase Young making plays all over the field, um, tackles for loss, not only you know, and then just ch absolutely changing the way Wisconsin even plays their offense. So another monster game from Chase Young. And another Ohio State player who, in my eyes, did put up a Heisman-worthy performance is J.K. Dobbins. He had a another absolutely awesome game. What is your take on that? Well, uh, I mean, this this game was hyped as a battle of the Big Ten's two best running backs. And Dobbins not only outrushed Taylor by over 100 yards, Wisconsin's defense entering this game allowed 61 yards rushing on the ground to the entire team per game. Dobbins by himself ran for 163 yards in this game. That is ridiculous when you consider the quality of Wisconsin's rush defense in this game. The offensive line required a quarter to find its footing, figure out the scheme, and then again we saw the bigger runs start busting out in the second quarter, especially in the third quarter. Dobbins surged ahead and turned in a huge, huge game and really may have brought himself into the Heisman race as well as Chase Young. And moving towards more of the uh, passing game, uh, Justin Field and Chris Olave are continuing to really mesh well together, and Chris Olave had a really nice game. What is your thoughts on their relationship? Yes, I mean, I even wrote a story uh, last week talking about how Chris Olave might just be Justin Fields' favorite target, and I think we, we saw that even more today. Uh, Olave two games ago had no catches. The past two games, he's had back-to-back two, -back two touchdown performances. He set a career high in yards today with like 89, something like that, and uh, he might have had the most catches again. I'm not sure on that, but he might have uh, for the second straight week, straight week for Ohio State. Um, you know, Olave's making plays, man, and... Uh, and him and uh, Field just have a connection that, I mean, you saw with K.J. Hill a couple of uh, drop passes, a couple of throws behind him today, that maybe that connection isn't quite as strong as that Alave Field's uh, hookup seems to be right now. And last question for you, Andy. I just want to talk to you about what you thought about how the weather impacted this game. We especially saw it in the first quarter where it just really limited Ohio State's passing game and really kind of gave an advantage to Wisconsin, but then Ohio State completely negated that. 
What are your thoughts? Oh, right, exactly what you said. Uh, really, it just affected the passing game for Ohio State in the first quarter. I think this game is more along the lines of 52-14 without the rain. I think it would have only played to Ohio State's strengths more and more speed on the edges. We saw that was a big advantage for Ohio State. You know, they had some of those playmakers in space, short routes. Obviously, the run game is mostly what took the took the torch for Ohio State, so to speak, able to carry them to this win today. And that's what the rain did, is it forced Ohio State to move the ball on the ground. And it just did it a lot better than Wisconsin did. Um, but like Field said, they could have scored more than 50 if it wasn't raining out. So I'm, I think you can look forward to seeing this offense again on good weather days. What's to say about this team, that they're able to put up such a good performance in this bad weather against heading into this game, the number one defense in the country? Well, I'm, I think they're in the race for college football playoffs. I think that's safe to say. I think they look like right now easily one of the four best teams in the country, probably the best team in the country, the most complete. When you talk about today how good the offense ended up playing the second quarter on, the defense absolutely shut down. The only score they allowed in this game, Wisconsin started at the Ohio State 30. Think about that. Wisconsin couldn't score unless it started – at Ohio State's 30 or inside. And this is an offense that came in averaging a lot of points per game. So uh, this, this team right now looks like one of the most complete in the country. And I do believe that's all we have time for today. Be sure to stay tuned next week when we'll have uh, another episode of The Best Day in Pondaland Land and another episode of The Film Room featuring myself and Andy. Uh, there's a bye week next week, so no uh, game coverage. But be sure to stay tuned in two weeks' time. We'll be back with more coverage. And from Andy Anders and Griffin Strom, I'm Brian Nelson, and this has been the Silver Bulletin Highlight Show. <laughs>